friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and today we're going to talk about what to do when you're going on a holiday. So obviously, not obviously, it's only obvious because I'm wearing a Christmassy jumper. It's not really Christmas but it's my Christmas. So it's that time of year again, it's the holiday season. Whether you celebrate Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Eid, whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate, I don't know your life. It is a time of year when a lot of us are traveling a lot and sometimes for extended periods of time. One of the main problems that us houseplant lovers have is what the heck am I supposed to do with all these houseplants I have and how do I not kill them when I'm not here? Gotta do something in order to keep them happy and healthy while we're gone. So I figured I would make a little video on what to do to prepare to go on holiday. So I myself am going on holiday, me and my partner, we are going to California for two and a half weeks to visit my family for Christmas. That's just about the right amount of time for my plants to need a little bit of something. So first off, I wanna say that these are tips for the winter time more so than summertime. It's not growing season here at the minute and so the amount of care and preparation your plants are gonna need while you're gone is a bit less than it would be during spring and summer, the growing season. So these are tips for the winter time. Also, all of these things are things that I'm gonna do and some things that might work for me might not work for you. Decide what you think is best for you in order to go on holiday. And if that means even if you're going away for three days, having somebody pay attention to your plants and make sure they don't die, that's fine. <laughs> do what you need to do, it's up to you. But yeah, these are just my thoughts on what I'm gonna do to prepare for going away. Before we get into like the bulk of it, just wanna say if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment on other things you'd like me to talk about down below and subscribe for more videos and follow me on Instagram. And yeah, okay, cool. Let's get into it. First off, we gotta talk about the length of your trip. If you're going away for a few days or up to a week, especially in the winter time, your plants will probably be okay without any sort of plant sitter or someone to look after them. Once you start getting into the over a week to two weeks to three weeks time, that's when you might want to consider actually asking somebody to come and look after your plants. In an ideal world, you get someone who understands plants on some basic level. They know not to just water them every day and basically drown them or not to underwater them. You know what I mean. Ideally, they have some sort of basic plant knowledge, but if they don't, that's also okay because no matter how much knowledge the person has, it's best to leave instructions for them. So luckily I have a Ravi. Ravi is our lovely flatmate and he knows enough about plants slash with my detailed instructions, he'll have plenty of information to go off of in order to make sure that hopefully none of my plants die over the course of this two week holiday. With them combined, and my preparations in advance, I think we will be okay in making sure that they all survive. So when you're making detailed information about your plants, try and say specifically how you want them to be watered, how often you want them to be watered. Try grouping plants by what type of water they need because then it makes it easier on your plant sitter so they don't have to go around searching for individual plants. Also, if they need to be misted or moved around or anything like that, give them that information if they need to turn on lights or turn off lights or anything. You wanna make it really as detailed as possible in order to give them the easiest time because obviously they're doing you a favor. So the first thing I think about when I'm going away is the light they're receiving. If my plants are in a place that's getting direct sunlight, I tend to move them away from those locations because I'm not gonna be able to control how much they're getting. I'm not gonna be able to open and close curtains. If you have some sort of sheer curtain or something, you can close that in order to make sure that they're not getting direct sunlight or you can move them more into a shady part of the room or into the interior and stop them from getting direct sunlight like that. Because it's winter, I've got my grow lights on at the minute because in London, we don't get really that much good light in the winter time. So we've been having them on probably from around five in the evening to 11 in the evening. When we get home from work until we go to bed, kind of just as a supplement to the 
kind of shady light that they're getting all day. Because Robbie is staying here over the course of the time while we're gone, I'm just gonna continue asking him to flip the grow lights on and off approximately that amount of time per day. If you haven't got someone that can do that for you, I would totally suggest getting one of those outlet timers that you can just plug straight into the socket and then plug your lights in in front of it and set the time to go on and off at the times that you want. That's really good because then you don't have to worry about anybody else. Because it's winter, regulating the temperature in your house while you're away is fairly important because it's quite easy to go away and leave the heat off in the house and that's fine when you don't have any houseplants but your houseplants aren't going to want it to be super cold. So it's best to make sure your plants don't get too cold while you're away. First thing, I would say move your plants away from your windows just like for light. Windows can also be a source of cold for your plants. Luckily we've got double glazing so our windows don't get that cold but if you have single glazing try not to keep them too close to the windows as the cold air from outside does kind of get in a little bit. Also it's important to know the threshold at which your plants get too cold. I think for most of the plants in my house I've got quite a mix of tropical mostly plants, some succulents, but I think a good average threshold for my household would be 15 degrees celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna set the heat so it goes on decently regularly as to hopefully not let my plants get too cold while I'm gone. Luckily, again, my flatmate's gonna be living here, so it'll be warm enough for him, therefore warm enough for the plants. And hopefully I will be okay with that. Humidity is another really important thing to think about while you're gone because if you're leaving the heat on, it will get drier. So you need to do some things in order to counteract that and keep your plants that are more tropical in a sort of humid climate. One thing you can do is group them all together because when the plants are more together, they kind of create a little mini humid environment, which is pretty cool. I'm not really sure how they do that, but they do. They make a little humid environment. So make your plants be friends, put them all close together, and they'll kind of help each other out with the humidity in that way. If you do have a humidifier, it would totally be worth it if you could either set it on a timer or if it's got a humidity sensor in it to keep it at a fairly decent level. You don't want your plants getting too dry. I personally don't have a humidifier. I feel like the humidity in my home is kind of weirdly high. I don't really understand it, but it's quite high, I think. But I will be setting out glasses of water and pebble trays throughout the groups of plants to try and just give it a little bit of extra moisture in the air, because eventually that'll evaporate and basically create humidity. One of the things that's the scariest about leaving your plants is water. Watering can probably be the most difficult and the most room for error in leaving your plants to go away. So it's kind of probably the biggest deal. So you kind of have to start early when preparing for keeping your plants safe over your winter holiday. I start about two weeks before I stop watering my plants. I want them to completely dry out in order for me to give them a nice big flush of water right before I leave, like the day before I leave. So I want to give them that two week period to dry out a little bit. Then on the day before I go away, I give my plants a thorough soaking. I'll water all of them and make sure that the soil is really nice and wet because you want to make sure that they have a good solid foundation of water before you go. And if you're going away for a few days to a week, that'll be fine. You probably don't have to worry about their water because it's winter and you probably aren't watering them all that much anyway. That amount of water should be fine for your trip. But seeing as I'm going away for a little bit longer than that, two and a half weeks, I need to sort of do something in order to make sure that my plants have enough water while I'm gone. So luckily I've got a Ravi. I'm gonna have him at about the week and a half mark go through with my water meter and test the plants and water the ones that need the water. But if you don't have a plant sitter, there are a couple things you can do in order to make sure that your plants are getting enough water. My go-to in that sort of situation is to use a water wick. This is what I do for my most water-loving plants. 
I wouldn't really do it for any sort of succulents or cacti or my snake plants or things that can really tolerate more drought. I would only do this for things like my calathea, my phytonia, stuff like that that really does want moisture consistently. Basically all you need is a big container and some sort of absorbent string. My preference is cotton because it is the most absorbent and it can hold the most water, but you can also use synthetic things like nylon as long as they do soak up water. So the first thing you want to do is cut the twine so it goes from the bottom of your container. You want to make sure it goes to the bottom because then you have all of the water you're going to be putting in it and have enough length to go into about the center of the pot that you are putting it into. So there are two methods at this point you could do. You can go from the top or from the bottom. I think I prefer going from the bottom because it kind of continues with that sucking up action that plants do. I like to feed the cord up through one of the bottom drainage holes of my pots, but you can also put it down into the pot from the top. It's just up to you. Putting it down into it is easier technically, but I don't know, I'm weird and I like to do it from the other way around. Either way, you wanna make sure that it goes through about two thirds to three quarters of the pot's length. So you are getting a good amount of coverage. Also, if your plant is bigger, I would suggest putting more wicks in throughout. You could put three or four in a bigger plant as opposed to one in a smaller plant. And then once the wick is inside your plant, put the other end into the bottom of the container and fill the container with water. You can give it quite a lot because the plant is only gonna soak up the water that it really wants. Also, if you do that and you do a plant sitter, you should ask them to check the level of the water that you've got because if it runs out, then they can refill it. So I've seen a couple of this strategy posted on the internet on pages and stuff. And in all of the pictures, it looks like the pot is above the plants. When I tried to do that, it basically killed all my plants because gravity is pulling the water down. So it's not letting the plant suck it up. It's just kind of forcing water into the plants. I find that it's best to put the pot lower than the plant. So then when the plant wants the water, it will suck it up and it makes it a little bit harder for the plant to get the water but it makes sure that it's not just going straight into the plant by gravity. It means that you're not going to end up overwatering your plant. So also if you're propagating anything in a minute it's quite a good idea to replace the water that your propagations are in and refill it making sure that there's enough so that it won't all evaporate while you're gone. When I went away over summer I had a propagation that I left and I didn't replace the water and I forgot to tell my plant sitter to refill it and they didn't and so my propagation died. I mean that is on me, I did that, but it is something to be wary of. Just fill it up basically to the top and you probably won't have that problem. Also it's winter so there's less evaporation going on, but that will help make sure that they don't die and that they have fresh clean water, which you're supposed to replace regularly anyway, so it's good to do. Also, before I go away, I like to do a little bit of leaf care. I like to dust off all of their leaves and make sure that they can get as much light as they can while I'm gone because it's good for them and it's good to give them a general clean anyway. Also, I like to prune out any dead bits or yellowing bits because those could fall off while you're gone and then end up rotting in the soil causing some issues. So prune off anything that's not looking very good. So also the day before I go, I like to do a little bit of pest prevention. I'll spray all of my plant's soil and foliage with my neem oil spray. I'll put the recipe I use down below along with links to all the things I use, which will be Amazon associate links. So if you do click on them, I do get a little bit of money, but if you don't, that's totally fine. Yeah, just thought I'd let you know because that's what you're meant to do. I spray all my plants just as a preventative measure. It's good to do and it's good to make sure that you do your best to prevent pests coming while you're gone because that's the worst time for pests to come because you can't do anything about it. So the best thing you can do is prevent it. Lastly, the final thing I have for you is try not to stress about it too much while you're on holiday. You're on vacation. Don't be thinking about your houseplants at home. They will be okay. You've done everything you can in order to prepare for you going away and so really do try not to think about it. You're just giving yourself unnecessary stress and anxiety. So that's it. 
that's all of my preparation tips and tricks on how to make sure that your plants hopefully survive while you are away on holiday in the winter time. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please, please do give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on things you would like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more videos. So thank you so much. I will see you all next time. Bye!